How can anti-Zionism be the new anti-Semitism? Surely there's no connection between them. Anti-Semitism is hatred of Jews as a people, a race, an ethnic group. Anti-Zionism is an objection to a country, a nation, a state. What's the connection between them? Anti-Semitism is a virus that mutates, so that new anti-Semites can deny that they're anti-Semites at all, because their hate is different from the old. In the Middle Ages, Jews were hated for their religion. In the 19th and early 20th century, they were hated for their race. Today, they are hated for their nation's state, Israel. What all three have in common is that there are different ways of saying that Jews have no right to exist collectively as Jews with the same rights as other human beings. In each era, anti-Semitism has focused on the primary form of collective Jewish existence. In the Middle Ages, they were a religious community, so they were hated for their religion. In the 19th century, when many European Jews became secular, they formed an ethnic group, a race, and were hated as such. Today, when their primary collective embodiment is as the people of Israel in the state of Israel, they are hated for their state. Anti-Zionism is the latest mutation of the world's longest hate. What then is the connection between Jews as a people, Judaism as a religion, and Israel as a state? The connection between the Jewish people and Israel goes back long before the birth of either Islam or Christianity. Jews created a society there in the days of Joshua, a kingdom in the days of Saul, and a nation with Jerusalem as its capital in the days of King David. All of this more than 3,000 years ago. Jews are the only people who ever created a nation state there. At all other times in the past 3,000 years, it was merely an administrative district in an empire whose center was elsewhere. The Assyrian, Babylonian, Persian, Alexandrian, Roman, and Byzantine empires, the crusaders of the Holy Roman Empire, the various Muslim empires, such as the Umayyads, the Abbasids, the Fatimids, the Mamluks, and the Ottomans, until, finally, the British. Jews are the only people who have maintained a continuous presence in the land. They are its indigenous, original inhabitants. The November 1947 United Nations vote to bring Israel into existence was a momentous reversal of imperialism. It gave back to the Jewish people the home taken from them by empire after empire. Israel was the only non-artificial creation in the Middle East after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. The rest, among them Jordan, Syria, Iraq, Libya, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen, were all artificial creations that hadn't been states before, which is why most of them still exist in a condition of ethnic, religious, and tribal strife. Only Israel had previously existed as a nation state. That's the unbreakable connection between Israel and the Jewish people. The connection between Israel and Judaism is equally ancient and fundamental. It's more than just, as Robert Frost said, home is the place where when you have to go there, they have to take you in. Read the Hebrew Bible and you'll see immediately that it isn't about the salvation of the soul. It's about creating in the Holy Land a society based on biblical ideas of justice, welfare, the sanctity of life, and caring for the stranger because you know what it feels like to be a stranger. Judaism began with two journeys to the land, one by Abraham and Sarah, the other by the Israelites in the days of Moses. At least half of the 613 commandments of the Bible are only applicable to the land of Israel. And though in the centuries of exile and dispersion, Jews lived in almost every land under the sun, Israel has remained a focus of their prayers and the only place where they've been able to do what every other nation takes for granted, construct their own society in the light of their own ideals. Judaism differs from the other Abrahamic monotheisms, Christianity and Islam, in that it's the only one of the three that never created or sought to create an empire. It was the imperialism of the Roman Emperor Hadrian that led him in the second century to change the country's name to Palestine. 
one of the first, but certainly not the last, deliberate falsifications of history by those who seek to deny the Jewish people's right to their land. There are 56 Islamic nations and 159 in which Christians form the majority. There is, and only ever has been, one Jewish state, tiny and vulnerable, though it is and always was. That's why anti-Zionism, denying Jews the right to their one and only collective home by misrepresenting Judaism, is the new anti-Semitism, every bit as virulent and dangerous as the old. Organiser un cours avec un raf de Torah Box, avec le service Torah Box chez vous, c'est enfin possible. Paris, Lyon, Tel Aviv, Madrid, Bruxelles, Montréal, Casablanca. Torabox vient à votre rencontre. Organisez un cours gratuitement chez vous, entre amis, au travail ou dans votre communauté. Dans une ambiance chaleureuse, un raf de Torabox donnera une conférence et répondra à toutes vos questions. Réservez rapidement sur notre site, par email ou par téléphone.